Greetings, everyone. Just wanted to welcome you to the, I guess this would be the week seven coaching call. I want to start out, uh, there's no real scheduled agenda for today. This is mainly a Q&A session. And, uh, what, but I am going to start off talking about budgets. Uh, budgets are one of those things that a lot of the students need to work on. Uh, you, you can't just play this business by ear. You have to be ready to take advantage of things. So what I'm doing here is I'm going to open up a budget that I did with a student this week that was here for the VIP ride-along and what I'm going to do is let me take his name off of this so that you guys don't know who he is that wouldn't be very nice there we go okay so this is a operating budget that I did with one of the students this week. And what, we're tr what we were trying to do is help him to decide on what consistent exit strategy he was going to, or consistent marketing strategy that he was going to employ in his business. And so all we did was open up a simple Microsoft Excel worksheet and we started hammering away. So. Let me get in here and really just zoom into this. That way you get a good view of it. So in this operating budget, we started off, you have to start off with what have you committed to on a monthly basis up to this point. This student actually buys the pre-foreclosure list from foreclosure listing service so that's fifty three dollars a month he's committed to he subscribes to the property analyzer pro and that's forty nine dollars a month that he's committed to he wanted to go ahead and throw in his home internet connection into his wholesale real estate business operating budget his home phone or his uh, cell phone line that he put that in there and then you have gas. And then this is really the variable that you guys need to start thinking about. If you're willing to do a whole lot of legwork, we can get this cost down to about 28 to 30 cents a piece on the postcards. If you're not, and that's in black and white, if you want to do the legwork and in go color, you're probably going to be closer to 40 cents a piece. If you want to use simply a turnkey solution such as click to mail and upload a list and send them out, the operating budget would be closer to that. So it's important to note that the difference really isn't that significant when you're talking about the kind of money that we're trying to make here. So I can copy this line, I'll paste it down here, so you're looking at almost a $500 difference. So it is, I mean, it is fairly significant. Now that's in the amount of postcards that Jim, this student is utilize. So ooh, uh, hang on a second on those questions. Uh, so what this student is doing is he's trying to maximize his list. He has about 7,400 addresses that he wants to be able to mail on a monthly basis. So what he's done is 
in order to be within an operating budget that he felt comfortable with, I told him either A, he had to decrease this, the quantity, or B, he had to increase the price. Now, with some one-on-one -on -one coaching, I told him the ways that I do it. it. It's extra work. You have to buy in bulk. You have to buy in advance. And then you have to do some deliveries, and it's, it's, it's not necessarily simple. But by following that strategy, we, we can get his cost down to $0.30. Cents. So it really takes his budget from $1,600 a month to $1,150, which is much more manageable for him. So now that's for a large quantity. The average student is going to start out probably at about 500, 500 postcards a month. And at 500 postcards, even if you're paying the 50 cents each, it's still, I mean, it's only $100 difference. And here's the other thing. The, the key is I've talked to a lot of the students, and a lot of you guys are in this position, and I may not have talked to you yet. You've got these grand ideas, and you haven't found the time, and, but you want to do it all yourself and save money and, and minimize cost. By doing so, what you're actually doing is delaying the execution of the strategy. So then the question is, to save $100, several of you are still trying to figure out or still trying to find the time and figure out how to print and where to get the envelopes. And so what's happened is you've missed a month worth of advertising. And when you miss a month worth of advertising, what does that cost you? Did you miss a deal? Did um, did you miss a deal? Did you just miss out on another month of consistency? So the, you really need to try to set this budget. Now, uh, let's see. I'm going to get into some questions here. Gas in an old car versus a newer car plus payment on the car or paid for car versus that has a payment on it. If cost is the factor, you might as well quit. Um, okay. Yeah, I mean, you know, this is just the gas. This line item is the gas it's going to take this student to drive the neighborhoods because we are implementing a neighborhood uh, farming strategy with this student as well. And this is the gas that's going to take this student to drive the neighborhood and uh, go to appointments and to operate on a monthly basis. Okay, do you send all 2,467 postcards all out once or do you break them down 2,400 divided by 4 send them out weekly? Uh, the answer to that question is we send the, the most effective way to market when you're marketing to a mass zip code is to send the entire zip code the first week of the month. You want the, the, the mailbox date, the date the postcard or letter arrives in the mailbox to be in the first week of the month Just because typically that's when people are the most motivated because that's when their bills are due. And uh, several of you on this call may have bills that come due and you know exactly what it is I'm talking about because that first week of the month you're trying to figure out how much money you're going to put back, how much money you're going to have for the things you want to do and that's when a lot of people make the final decision that it's time to either downsize or to cash in on something that uh, it has become a burden. And it, it, they, they have this pile of bills that are due and at that time that house is a burden. It could convert to cash and someone like us can convert it to cash quickly and that's when a lot of times you get the calls. So we try to mail all all postcards that the first week of the month so that uh, 
you, you hit them at really what is psychologically one of their most uh, motivated times of the month because that's when they're going through the bills that are that have to be paid and figuring out which ones they can put. Most people are a biweekly pay schedule. And they're trying to figure out when they can, which ones they can put off to the 15th, which ones have to be paid now, that kind of thing. Uh, now, I'll tell you with the more like a list type mailer, we'll get back in here. I'll open up. This is one of the modules that the FTC that you guys do have in your in the in the FTC dashboard, but we'll focus on this one. Okay, you should be able to see that now. Is this still showing the budget? There you go. Okay, now, if you're mailing a probate lead, a pre-foreclosure, a, let me try to get rid of those icons. Let's see, if you're mailing a probate, pre-foreclosure, mortgage late lead, That's really it. Those are the type of people that you've got to mail them as soon as the lead becomes available the first time. You, they're, they're you know, kind of a time sensitive lead. Whereas the vacant and abandoned, the ugly but occupied, divorce, post bankruptcy, REOs, uh, code violators, and absentee owners, those are not necessarily a, uh, a time sensitive lead. So you've just got to learn how to break up your your advertising. It's 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 prospect dependent, and that's where I go back to the this slide. You've got to understand the marketing process. Final slide. There you go. The marketing process of prospects into leads equals deals. So, guys, hang on one second. I'm going to be on this for about an hour. So, I'm so sorry about it. Yeah. Are what can I do for you? Are you in your room? No, I'm not. Okay. Well, I'm supposed to be bringing some private samples. You can leave them in the chair right in there. Okay. All right, thank you. Look, just right here? Yes, right there. Thank you. All right, guys, I apologize for that. Um, you've got to understand the marketing process. And so, okay. you You've got to learn how to turn the prospects into leads and then leads into the deals. But to do that, you have to understand which types of prospects need to be targeted at which time. Yeah, that, that's just very, very crucial. So let me get back to this one. So again, your probate, your pre-foreclosures, the nods are going to be you need to target them and try to market to those prospects immediately upon receipt of the list or acquisition of the list. And the other ones, you need to make sure, you need to try to get the postcards to them the first week of the month, every month. And uh, you have to be consistent. Any other questions while we're on that topic? Okay. You're welcome. I'll tell you, does anybody have, have anything specific they need to work on right now? Any of the students, any of you guys hung up on a certain area, just go ahead and chat to me, go down to the questions pane, and let me know. I, I'm, I'm I'm very interested in knowing what you, we're, you know, guys, we're in week eight, so it's 
it's go time. We, we've been doing this for eight weeks. Uh, recorded a couple modules this week with regards to uh, defining your target audience and your target market, how to make your phone to ring. And um, let's see. What I'm going to do now is let me pause this screen. I'll open up. Here. I'll show you what we were working on earlier this week and for those of you that missed the call I'm going to go ahead and open up my master list Now this master list is what is the way I do my zip codes. This is the, we'll, we'll go ahead and go into this part right here and show you. Does that zoom in? Yeah. This is a summary of the, the areas that I specifically target in my real estate investing business. You see Carrollton, Dallas, Farmers Branch, Garland, Mesquite, Richardson, Rowlett, Sunnyvale. Uh, you've got in the left-hand column where it says OO summary. That is owner occupied. In the center column, you see absentee owner summary, which is the uh, we had a good question from a student yesterday. Absentee owner does not mean they live out of state. It means according to the tax rolls, the property. The mailing address for the uh, the tax billing address is different from the property address. So when it, when it says absentee owner, it's because the owner receives mail at a different address. Now, does that mean they don't live in the property? Not always. Some people do receive their mail at a PO box. So that's you know, it does happen sometimes, but for the vast majority of the absentee owners, you're talking about rentals and out-of-state owners. Uh, totals by city. You can see this is I, the marketing strategy that I use. This uh, is a strategy that targets a total of 22,445 residences in the state or in the DFW area. Uh, I'll show you one of the smaller ones, just because it's, it, it's going to be a lot easier. This is Sunnyvale, and you notice I'm targeting between 67000 and 130000 in tax value. It is, let's zoom in there, and the deed dates are more than 15 years. Now, a town like Garland, it's probably easier if I show you here that had, you notice there's still 6,100 addresses on my list for Garland. And I actually had to whittle the criteria down on Garland to where, real quick do this. I'm, I don't, I, see I whittled it down based on my budget, which is the same thing that I'm telling you guys to do. My budget for this We'll go back to page one. My budget was approximately $1,500 a month in postage. So here you see these numbers just were, were changing and changing so rapidly that I actually changed my zip code frequency to every four months instead of every three months because I just couldn't get my backyard small enough. Uh, and at the end of the day, if I had left this at three months, it was going to be over $3,000 a month, which was beyond my comfort level, my, my budget. So I left it at 4,000, I changed the frequency to every four months, 
so I could cover more of an area. Again, I've been real consistent in these areas for the last four or five years, and I broadened the criteria a little bit this year, just trying to cast a, a broader net. And then here, so here you see how my mailers are broken up for the next 12 months. For the next 12 months, and this is this is something important that I, I've been trying to hammer home to the students. This is a commitment. These I have committed to mail these 22,000 postcards on a four-month cycle for the next 12 months. So Garland, that big, the, big, the big part of my list went out this month, $6,175 uh, or not dollars, uh, postcards. Those were dropped last Monday. I bought one house already and I have four or five other uh, appointments over the next couple weeks. I would imagine that I'll be able to, I'm hoping to buy another couple houses off of that. And the probate list was finished on Tuesday or Wednesday and I mailed that out today as well. You, and, but then you see here where Rowlett, Richardson, Sunnyvale, Farmers Branch, and Carrollton, I have scheduled for October, February, and June. It's scheduled. Those mailers are going out. Mesquite, November, will be in November, March, and July, and Dallas will be December, April, and August. That takes me for the next 12 months. I don't have to pull any lists. All I have to do is delete the returns. This list is solid for the next 12 months, and it's very important for me to make sure that you guys understand that, that this is a commitment. This isn't a, I send out 6,100 postcards to Garland in September, and I start panicking because I haven't bought a house yet, and oh, I'm gonna have to scrap this plan, and uh, I'm gonna mail Garland again next month, but I'll mail it different. It, it's even if I hadn't bought a house this month off of that mailer, I would still be happy knowing that at the end of the day, I now average one lead a day. I get one buy call which is when someone wants to sell their house a day on average. It's, an, it's a numbers game. I'm putting these things out in people's mailbox. They're going to have a trigger event. See, you've got to understand, these 22,445 people that are on this list, there might be 100 of them that will actually sell their house, or maybe 200 that will sell their house this year. And most of them or sell their house to an investor this year. And most of the, the, the hundred that do, when they decide to finally sell it, it will be because there is a trigger event in their life. There will be something that makes them say, we're out of here, or we're getting rid of that property. And when that happens, I either want to be in their face immediately or I want them to have seen my message enough times that they think, let's call that cash for houses guy. And then I, I have to be ready because, I mean, look, I'll ask you this question. It's going to sound kind of stupid, but if I was to get buy a house in, well, let's see, December off of the Garland postcard that I sent in September, do you think I'd be upset about that? No, I wouldn't. And so that's the very important thing is you want to just consistently send those postcards. Uh, we've got some questions coming in now. Oh, wow. We've got some questions. All right. Sorry, guys. I was... Okay. Okay. One of the students uh, mailed some code violators. Postcards that are returned. Uh, one of the questions is, what do you do with the postcards that are returned to you? Uh, it's a good question. I, I do several things. Most of the ones that just come back returned to sender, not deliverable as addressed, I just throw them away because they don't cost all that much. Um, but if there's a a lot of times you get them back and you've got to look at the little yellow label, label on them. The, uh, 
it, sometimes it will have a forwarding address, but it will say return to sender, forwarding time has expired. In that case, if, in, but then it gives the old forwarding address because it only forward the mail for a couple months. Well, then I take that and update that address in my spreadsheet. Uh, but, but the rest of them, I mainly just, uh, just trash them. I don't, because who knows, the next month the, the, the uh, mailman may leave the postcard in the mailbox. The next month the person may have moved back into the house or may have a tenant. You just never know. So I don't, uh, I don't really discriminate against that. Uh, that's a good question. Yeah, uh, 28 cents. The way I get 28 cents is I buy 20,000 postcards at a time from Platinum Direct in Plano or Carrollton. I print up 20,000 of them. Then I go pick, then I have to go pick them up, pay for all 20,000. It costs about 500 bucks. Then I take those 20,000 to a mailing center in Dallas off of uh, Regal Row called Mail Today and I leave those boxes of postcards with Dan. Well then, you, you, let me see, I think you guys are still looking at the same screen. Yeah. So then what I do is, let me close this. I'll close this. Is every month, you guys, I got to remember where I save my own stuff. I go in to this folder, I get into my list, and you, here you see September, January, May. That's the garden list. I, may, I, email, I email this list to Dan at Mail Today on, a, I think it was the 26th or so that I actually sent that email out and that way he got them he got them dropped and I think they hit uh, the fifth or sixth right after Labor Day they started hitting um, hitting the mailboxes so then for my October the first week of October mailer what I will do is I've got to go in there to this master category and complete and, and update the and, and uh, create a new spreadsheet for the, I'll show you. See, October, February, June will be Rowlett, Richardson, Sunnyvale, Farmers Branch, Carrollton. It's 5,424 pieces. Uh, I'll zoom into that for you guys. It'd be 5,424 pieces. And then I will uh, create a new spreadsheet file just for those 5,400. I'll email those to Dan, you know, last week of October, tell him the date I want them in the mailbox, and then he just emails me an invoice. I pay for the invoice. He mails the cards. He does. He makes sure there's no duplicates in, in his file. But then the nice thing with this is is I do get a very good rate because I'm, I'm sending so much quantity and I'm doing it on a monthly basis. So yes, he does send them out pre-sort, first class mail through his bulk permit, which he gets a, he sends an awful lot of mail. So, I mean, that's, it, it works nice, Stacy. Uh, it's a little extra work though. I mean, it's not like I just go straight to a website, upload my list, hit send, and then they print the postcards and mail them. I am in a position that I can buy in bulk, and so I do so. Let's see. And then the other thing I do is me when I send that monthly mailer to Dan. opening up an email. I'll show you guys what I do. Attachments. Recipient. 
spent fifty eight minutes. Almost there, guys. This is the email I sent to Dan last week. And you notice down here, or not last week, I sent it on August 28th at about noon. Said I'd like to send these, these lists out next week. And then you look at the attachments. It's got the September, January, May Excel file. And it also has the probate list from July and June. So the, the last two months of probate go out as well. And just in case they hadn't made up their mind when they first hit the probate list, I go ahead and reach out and touch them again with a postcard, but not a letter because letters cost more money. And I'm cheap. I believe in keep it small and keep it all. So I know a lot of people don't like to say things like that, but you know, it's, it's, it's just the truth. Keep it small and keep it all. And uh, then if you want to take the weekend off, you can. Let's see. What does my mailer look like? That's a very good question. I will show you if I can figure out how to do this. Cyberlink. One second. Ah, no worries. Someone wants to know what my mailer looks like. I will show you. You just have to wait a second. All right. <laughs> Thanks. Yeah, I try to be detailed and thorough. One of the reasons I'm detailed and thorough is because organization is a problem with me. It just is. Uh, it's, it's not my strong suit. I'm more of a talker and a doer. So let's see. Can you guys see my webcam? Yeah, I guess you can. Okay. I'm not dressed for uh, uh, TV, but this is the postcard I send, and this is the way he prints it. When I have it printed by the printer, all he prints is this side, and that's my Google Voice phone number. There's my investor squeeze page. It tells them to keep the card, list all the different things that we help in, we specialize in, and just says guys for houses. And when I when I pay for the bulk printing, the twenty thousand cards are only printed on this side, and this is just yellow card stock. And then when Dan prints my card for me, he he prints the address name. He prints my return address and he prints his bulk permit on there all in one run. I do that, that way I don't have to pay the printer for the printer to print double sided. He just has to print this side. I'm already paying Dan to run this postcard through the printer so he just adds these two lines and his bulk permit in, bada bing bada boom. And it's a, it's a much more simple process. So I'm going to turn my webcam off. You guys. I'm not dressed for it, but I, I want to show you that, uh, and that's that's how I do it. And those are just simple postcards. They're a little bit smaller too, 
Stacy, so that's one of the reasons, and Sylvia, that's one of the reasons they're uh, more cost effective uh, because uh, they're, they're smaller cards, so they do cost less to mail. Uh, let me tell you what. I'll even show you just out of curiosity, actually. Let's see. Inbox. Attachments. Look for an email from Dan. I think I've deleted it, but I don't know where to find it. Give me one sec. See if I can find it. Hang on, guys. I want to show you. I have a lot of emails. So I think it's. Ah, I know what the problem is. When he emails me, it doesn't come up as from Dan, it comes up as mail today. That is the problem. There we go. Found it. Sorry to leave you guys waiting. Hope you don't mind. Yeah, this is the invoice that Dan mails me. It's just, this was 6,500 pieces, so the actual postage, printing, delivery, and everything after tax was 1644.60 divided by 65.54. So it's, it's like 25 cents in postage and printing for the fulfillment center and then it's like another two cents at um, the printer so when you round it all off it's, it, it equals right at like 27.5 cents might as well I just go ahead and call it uh, 28 cents so I'll answer that question where do I get my probate list uh, I do my probate so yeah I do my probate so complicated you would uh, you would need to uh, the easiest way is to buy it from FLS or foreclosure listing service. Okay, must deal with money contract. Okay, thank you. Okay, you can see my. Sorry guys, I gotta read through all these. Okay, you were able to see. Uh, you know, one of the questions was, do I have a picture of my wife? Why do I have a picture of my wife on the postcard? I, I'll, I'll tell you that, was anyone else not able to see the postcard when I was displaying it on the webcam? And a couple people said they couldn't see but you can't see, well, no, it's not showing right now. I'm talking about when I showed it a couple minutes ago. Was, any, was everyone able to see it? Okay, it looks like one person wasn't able to see it. Everyone else is saying yes. Um, let's see. Yeah, I mean, it, it helps me to have a picture of Jennifer on there, and, and not just Jennifer, uh, just a picture of anyone. It, it, it's a personal approach. You know, I, I, I'm a proponent that, Real estate investing, or real estate is still a people business, and we just play the num numbers game. So I like to make it a personal thing. And most, and then what happens is when people call, they call and they ask for Jennifer, and uh, 
I could put a picture of myself on there, and, and still, when people called, they would call, and then they're asking for Tim. And the nice thing about that is when they're asking for a specific person, it it's kind of like you're calling your old buddy. And so it, it really makes it a lot easier. Uh, and, and, you know, it's kind of some of the bonding is done up front. Uh, who answers my Google Voice number? It's me. It's it, it forwards directly to my cell phone, and there's some settings inside Google Voice where you can you you can modify it. You can modify Google Voice. Let me find this for you guys. Accessories. I can never find this you can. Ah, there it is. If I ever ask again, you guys tell me it's on communication and chat. Uh, I set up my Google Voice. Whoa, that's a big view of me today, guys. So, okay. Let's see. Audience view. Okay, you should be able to see my webcam now. I set up my Google Voice to where when I get a buy call, you see right there where it says Heritage Homes? That's the way it rings into my phone. And so I know that at that point in time, no matter what I'm doing, I know that that is money calling me. And so I like to uh, answer the phone no matter what. And then also, if you have a smartphone, you can download the Google Voice app. And the reason I like the Google Voice app is if you miss any calls or if someone called you and you need to call them back, you can just go into the received calls and there's all the buy calls I've received since uh, June 23rd. So, I mean, that's, and it, and it keeps going. So, ever since I changed this number, which was uh, a couple months ago, ever since June 20th, I have everyone that called me, every call I missed, every voicemail. So it's always easy to find a seller's information, which is important. So we'll go ahead and stop videotaping me since I'm um, let's see. Okay, so yeah, I answer the Google Voice phone number because I'm available. Now if you're not available, you have to work or something like that. Uh, you probably want to go ahead and have an answering service. I mean, because here's the deal, especially if you're advertising green sheet, yellow pages, or uh, a lot of online advertising, what a lot of people do is they, uh, it, they're in the yellow pages and they call. And if they don't, if you don't answer, they hang up the phone, they look right back down at the yellow pages, and there's six more people that do what you do. And so what happens is they just call the next guy. Same thing as if they're in a phone book. Let's see. Thanks, Lamont. Okay, Jeff, you want to talk about contracts? What do you want to talk about? Just contracts? I guess I don't understand. Okay. Yeah, George is not on this call. Uh, it, it, just me today. So if George knows about Trinity and contracts, uh, I can't. Uh, yeah, 
Anybody else got any questions? <laughs> That's funny, Stacy. I'm not going to tell anyone that. I might use it. Review how to transfer videos to box.net or to the computer desktop. Okay. Okay. Uh, yeah, I got about 10 minutes. So, say I've got my video on my cell phone. So, I'm going to take you guys. Let's see. You should be viewing my main monitor now. Uh, Joe Snow, the answer is to that, uh, uh, all but Birchlawn are gone. The Birchlawn property is still available. I'm, I think I'm going to be able to get a new roof put on that by the uh, seller's insurance company. Uh, when HOA involved, how long do you need to close? It should be about the same time, uh, about the same time frame. Lamont, if you would send me an email to Tim at flipthatcontract.com. I'll answer that question uh, via email. It's just Tim at flipthatcontract.com. Okay, uh, Betty, you want to talk about video, etc. What I'm going to do right now is Take a picture of my screen, and now I'll take a video of my screen. Hello, webinar. Okay, good to go. We're all done. You connect your video camera to your computer. However, you do that. I mean, there's 18 different ways. It could be a uh, you. You might have a USB connection. You might have an SD card that you take out. Uh, Yeah, Stacy, give me a call this afternoon. I'll be, uh, I'm taking off early today and going to go hang out with uh, my kids. So give me a call. I'll be driving around. Let's see. Okay, so I plug in my phone. I tell it to use it as a removable disc. I hop right in there. You just have to know your own device. And where it stores things. So I'm in here to the camera function. There's some vacation pictures that I took. Let's see. One hundred media. Okay. So here's the picture I just took. I'm going to go ahead and you can either save it to your hard drive, and depending on your setup, Betty, it's real hard to tell, but what I'll do now is I'll go ahead and open up box.net. Log in. I don't know my logon password, I don't think. Oh, it worked. Okay. And Box.net has a mobile app as well, just so you guys know. I bet you I can move these uh, videos and pictures right in there right now. Anyway, I won't even play with that. I'm going to log on to Box.net. I'm just going to hit New. And when I hit New, I'm going to create a new folder. And I'm going to call this folder Webinar. Now, once I create it, I'm going to go over here to the More Options, Folder Properties. This thing's in my way. I can make it private. I can make it collaboration. Or you can make it your default folder. I'm going to make it private because I don't want people seeing what I'm doing. general. You can put a description in there if you want. I'm just going to hit OK because we don't have a whole lot of time. I'm going to open up the webinar folder. It says this, this folder is empty. 
drag files from your desktop onto the browser and upload. So I'm going to hop right here, grab this picture I just took of the webinar, drag it right into the BoxNet, and it's uploaded. Then I'm going to go right back to the same folder that my cam I opened my camera on. We're going to 100 Media. That's the default folder for this. And then there's video one. That's the video I just took of the webinar. I'm just going to drag that right over to box.net. And just like that, it's uploaded. So now what I can do is I can go back to my main root directory. I can click on share and now I've got a secure link to this folder. So I can copy that folder. I can pop right over here into the webinar control panel. Uh, if I can find it. I can go down to the chat window. And now I've sent the entire audience the link to those two pictures, that picture and video. So if you're looking at that link right now, you can actually click on there, open up my box.net folder that I just created, and you can download that video and that picture. It's that simple. We've got four minutes. Any other questions? You're welcome, Betty. You know I love you. Anybody else? Big plans this weekend? Me too. I'm coaching two football games tomorrow for my son's youth team. All right. Hey, Joe Snow, give me a call. We need to play golf or eat lunch next week. Jim, let me know when you get those postcards ordered. Okay? I need to uh, – I'd like to see that you got that done. Uh, and then let me know once you've reached out to Dan and if you have any problems there. Uh, David, if you're having trouble designing uh, the marketing plan that you want to use to uh, get the calls coming in, let me know. Eric, give me a call if you need help. Fred, let me know how it's going. I'd like to see what your backyard is. Jeff, try to. Uh, if I was you, I'd try to. Uh, let me know what zip code you're working and what, what things you have going with that. Uh, let's see. I think that's all I've got for everyone. Uh, I'm going to be trying to do a lot of impromptu webinars over the next couple weeks for you guys. Uh, it, it's going to be highly dependent on if I have a time open up in my schedule. Uh, the other day I had a webinar because I had a 1230 appointment cancel. Uh, and it was just one of those things that I was able to uh, – I hate to say squeeze you guys in, but you know what I mean. Uh, I'll show you guys something real quick. Inbox sent. So this is the, the house I bought today. Is my contract, letter of intent. Uh, if you, you guys haven't watched the module yet in the FTC portal about the letter of intent, you really need to try to. I'm telling you, it's good stuff. Uh, you know, this is my letter of intent for the house that I put under contract today. Uh, it's a 422 in Garland, and I uh, buy it for 58. Needs about 15 to 20, which is about. Ten dollars a square foot, and uh, it's uh, it's looking good. So that's one down, and I need to buy three more for this month to meet my goals. So it is two o'clock. Uh, Eric, that was a uh, he got my postcard from uh, two weeks ago. Guys, it is Friday at 2 o'clock. I am going to pick up my son, and uh, we're going to go from there. So 
guys, again, go out, be consistent, commit to a strategy, and you'll be successful in this business. Don't, don't, don't try to reinvent the wheel. Okay? All right. Uh, ah, you guys always right. Last minute stuff. All right, yeah. Hey, thank you. Thank you all. Get out there. Design your marketing plan and plan your work and work your plan. Don't let your work work you. Have a great weekend.